Let's start with die grinders. These are a must have set of bits for aluminum workers. They're wide flute spacing so they don't clog up like a normal bit. And they remove material real fast. I'll put a link below for everything in this video. This is 3 8 thick aluminum. Don't use this type of bit on stainless though. You'll end up chipping it and wearing it out so it won't work good on aluminum anymore. Use this type of bit. Get you some of these drum sander wheels, various diameters, if you're, especially if you're doing like intake work where you need to port match runners to flanges and stuff like that. And then if you want to get real fancy, you can use these, they're like scotch bright, I think, like a rough scotch bright for the final finish to get rid of all those little irregular marks from the drum sanders. That'll make you really look like you know what you're doing. I prefer these bigger die grinders. They have a little more mass. They're less susceptible to chatter because of the weight of them. And I like these ones with the actual this big hexes on them instead of these ones that require those stupid little cheap stamp steel wrenches. You can just grab whatever crescent wrenches you have and undo these. That's what I prefer. Scotch Bright Roll Lock wheels, they work really good for deburring sharp edges. Also good for making a smoother surface finish if you have any imperfections, little ones. Then you can scotch bright over it after with the pad. Oscillating tool. I found out about these about a year ago. These are great for removing tack welds. Grinders and flap discs, both cordless and corded. I went over these in the first video. High torque impact guns of various sizes. I use these for uh, tapping tapered threads and then you use an eight point socket. So it's, you know, it's, a, it's two squares essentially in there. So it fits on the taps, good. I know some of you guys are thinking that's crazy, but don't knock it till you try it, it works great. And if you're tapping a bunch of flat parts, you'll wanna get a tapping arm like this where you can put in whatever tap size you need. And then I put the gun or drill up here on the top. Then you, this is floats around the slide so you can get it, get it nice and centered under there. This works great. I use that a lot for production work. Dual action sander. You guys have probably seen me use this quite a bit in a lot of my older videos for touching up scratches in aluminum. I just use, usually start with 320 and then work my way up to six or 800 depending on how smooth I want the parts. This one's a definite must have for the stuff I make. If you're putting a spin finish on a tube in a lathe and you get these little stubborn nick marks, a quick easy way to get rid of those is just DA sand it out. <laughs> Hand drills. If you're doing a lot of production steel drill, and I recommend an, you know, a plug-in electric one with more torque, or a good, a good air drill that's kind of bigger sized. This one I like a lot, this Jet. It's, it only spins at 800 RPM, which is good for most stuff. And then for smaller stuff that doesn't require as much torque, they spin a little faster, like I use that to tap eight millimeter or quarter threads. And then make sure you have reverse on them. Some of them don't actually don't have reverse. Like this old Matco one, it doesn't have reverse on it. In my shop, since I don't do much production work anymore, though I almost always go to this, just because you're not dragging around a hose or an extension cord. And then make sure you get one with a half inch chuck. Don't any of you keyboard commandos dare talk bad about my Ryobis, I'll block your ass, I love these things. I've had Milwaukee's and Rigid's, and I had a Rigid that cost twice as much as this, and it started failing and falling apart, and the battery started falling out in probably less than a year. I have nothing but good to say about these things.
If you have a manual way, make one of these for it so you can spin it faster to get the tool holder out of your way. And on my CNC knee mill, instead of using the hand crank, you move the table up and down. I use a cordless drill. Air ratchets come in handy too if you have fixtures or jigs where you're taking out a lot of bolts or nuts. Sawzall. And then an engraver tool with a tungsten tip on it. You can shape this however you want. I used this in a really popular old video where I repaired a Mustang intake manifold and made it look like it was cast again. Air chisel. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, let me know. Everything's linked below.